best friends and next door neighbors, Willow and Lillian, spill the tea on murder, mysteries, and other things that go bump in the night. So get your favorite teacup ready and let's get into it. Welcome to Cruelty Podcast. This is Lillian, and with me is Willow. Hello. Hello. Hi. It's late. It is very late. Well, we got used to recording earlier, mm -hmm. and then it's for reasons beyond our control. It's later today. But yeah, that's. I like to give the weather report and time of day the start of every podcast. Just Still, in case just you in didn't case. know. Yeah, you're like, I, I desperately need to know what the weather is doing. It's my Yesterday, version of small or talk. Or whenever you're listening to this. Yeah, you're listening to it like, I don't know where you are and I don't care. And I'm like, well, it's nice out. Yeah, uh, yeah so it's still Influencer Month. And for most of this month, we have been covering influencers who've done horrible things. Right. Mm -hmm. But this time, I'm kind of switching it up a little bit to cover an influencer who was murdered. And I'm sure you've heard of this case. It was all over the news last year or the year before. I don't know. I don't know what year it is. You you briefly mentioned it to me before we started and it didn't ring a bell. So, yeah, I don't know. I'd heard of it. So I don't know. It's pretty common, actually, influencers being murdered um, either by family or fans. Right. And. I don't know. It's like being on social media as an influencer allows the world to see into kind of this carefully crafted picture of you and your life. And I don't know why people don't because I get it. I get it that when I watch a video of somebody like restocking their bathroom, which I don't understand them, but sometimes I watch them because I'm zooted. they're so satisfying and or, you know, like I'm doing this new makeup, this lip gloss, you know, right. and the background is perfect and the house mm -hmm. is perfect and they're perfect. Mm -hmm. And this manufactured picture and the way they're talking is we feel like we know them, but we don't, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's the danger of the parasocial relationship. And we really feel like we get to know these people like they're a part of our lives. And I think that some people then feel entitled right. to this person. Because right. like, I attention. know that a lot of our listeners have said that, like, I feel like we're friends and like, you know, that kind of thing. But I don't think that that is necessarily we're not taking it to a, a negative Degree, no, you know, no, like, it doesn't feel toxic or no, unhealthy or weird. No, we're definitely trying to do our best and, and be the best that we can. We're not like. We're also not manufacturing. Any, this is it. This is. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, this is how we we're are. raw dog in life. And this is who we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's fine. But, I mean, the thing with influencers is that most of the time what you see in the camera is just what's in the camera. You don't the see rest anything of the house else. Yeah. and the rest of the view from behind the camera is is usually completely different. It is. And I'll talk a little bit about this kind of man. you know, that it's their brand. It's their job. Absolutely. And absolutely. it takes and a lot of work. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It is work. It's entertainment. And for they the should be us. paid for it. Yes, they should. Mm -hmm. And but I do think that there is a danger. And I know I think the Internet has just expanded so much and hasn't been around very long. And we don't know how to psychologically deal with someone mm -hmm. who we see every day who talks about their life in a very personal way and then separate ourselves still. I think it's hard to do. And I think for people struggling with mental health issues, it can be impossible. Mm. And so we'll talk about that some more. And who we're covering today is Mercedes Moore. And I don't know, she's just she was just this beautiful, driven, ambitious woman, um, business savvy. But one of her fans felt a little too familiar and entitled. So if you decide to look into this case on your own, I'm just going to say don't eh? just mm. don't. I, I've spoken about this all month. The victim blaming I've come across has been disgusting and it is it's the worst I've ever seen it with this case. This woman did nothing wrong. She was just living her life. And people are trying, it's beyond just victim blaming, but also wild speculation, starting rumors, everything to just making shit up mm -hmm. all the way to getting tarot card readers on their YouTube channel mm -hmm. to present things as though they're evidence in this case to huge to thousands of viewers. 
And I think that is so disgusting and irresponsible. And y'all, I love me some tarot cards. Right. You're going to be making your own deck. I'm I am making my own making deck. My own deck. Yeah. We're actual tarot readers. But like for years, yes. That's disgusting. That is You're, disgusting behavior. It is vile. <laughs> it, it's very reminiscent of like the 80s and 90s where like psychics would come on and oh yes. I mean it still happens today, but it was really big back then with like. And hey, I got TV no shows. qualms if police or family reach out to a psychic. That's fine. Definitely, definitely. But when but it's the other way around, pretty don't gross. Don't go on YouTube saying that you know exactly where the body is buried. Like that's just no. It's gross mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. speculating about her relationship to the perpetrator. I'll, I'll, I'll get more into detail as we go on, but it's really fucking gross. So she was 33 at the time of her death. Mercedes Moore was a brand with over 2.5 million followers on Instagram. She modeled bathing suits and lingerie and took very sexy pictures. She also had an OnlyFans with a big following. All of which she deserved. Beautiful, outgoing, driven, and hardworking, Mercedes was blessed with natural beauty, which she spent time on honing and perfecting. And y'all, like, she has an amazing figure. Just, mm. just beautiful. And y'all, that takes work. Right. More work than I'm willing to do. <laughs> Girl, to I think honest. about all that work all day. I'm like, oh man, you know As what I, I could do? My fourth <laughs> piece of pizza. You know what I could do to get like that? Nothing. I'm not, not doing what I'm it. doing. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, she worked out constantly. Yeah, she did have yeah. cosmetic pr like surgery mm -hmm. procedures done. She had hair extensions. She had her nails. She got lash extensions. I mean, this cost thousands of dollars to upkeep her appearance. Right. And because that's what she wanted for her brand. That was her business was herself. Girl, if I could, I would. I totally Hell understand. Hell yes. I mean, and she was always this way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not. And I want to point out this, too, because a lot of people will look, you know, at these beautiful Instagram models and they just think eh, or whatever and be judgy or y'all. It takes effort to put on something cute and do your makeup good and yeah. then take cute pictures. That shit's hard. I can't take a picture to save my fucking <laughs> life. Try. You do. It's really so sweet. I don't change selfies very much. It's fine. And also, I haven't changed, so why change it? But yeah, like, and she's always been this way. Mercedes, like an mm -hmm. entrepreneur, like mm -hmm. kind of just was like in her blood. When she was nine, she opened up her garage to do hair braiding. I love that. Is that not I fucking that. cute as shit? I love that. I used to, I used to do hair and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, she's nine. When she was so, nine, I, sorry, I bypassed that yeah, age. Wow. She was nine, and she had opened her own hair business. A nine-year-old entrepreneur. I love it. What an amazing one. It, it reminded me of myself, because yeah, I totally. started like making little jewelry. I used and to make selling. bracelets and sell it. I made mm -hmm. bracelets. Mm -hmm. um, I did macrame all through school. I did macrame. <laughs> I did like the pony beads and like yeah. the leather thong. Yeah. I did like polymer clay earrings. Still do them. Um, the, the, the iron beads. What are those called? I don't Val know. does those. The, the beads that you make little things and you, you iron them and melt them. Melty beads. Uh, nope, we don't do those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we yeah, do. Yeah, oh, the, the perler beads. Yeah. yeah. That's a bit like after my time. I fucking love that. But shit. I also made like comics that I sold for like five Ooh. cents a piece. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so cute. I was always trying to sell stuff from like the I time I was that. six. I and can on. respect that so much. The hustle. Yeah. Yes. It's in your blood. Yes. <laughs> so she, Mercedes Moore is not her real name. She was born Janae Gagnier on November 26, 1987, in El Paso, Texas. She was well loved by family and friends. Mercedes always wanted to be a model. When she finished private high school, she went to school to become a dental assistant mm. and quickly found out that was not her jam. That was not the life for her. So she moved to Las Vegas with her then boyfriend and became an exotic dancer. And she chose the name Mercedes because it implied luxury and more because she always wanted more according uh, to her mother, which I think is yes. cute as shit. <laughs> yes. I love I it. I love that. <laughs> I just think it's cute. Yeah. At first, her parents really did disapprove of her career choice, but quickly changed their tune when they saw how much money she was making. Yes. She raked in four to five grand a weekend. All of my dancer girls. Okay. I'm just so proud of y'all. Of just And saying. her parents were proud, too. They're like, so proud. Get it, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. Get it. Yes. Their daughter was very driven and very successful. And this isn't talked about enough in her case. She did well 
well for herself. And I don't care if she was a stripper and only fans model. That shit is hard work. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I dated a ton of strippers in my younger Mm -hmm. days. And those women worked so hard and put up with so much bullshit. Oh, they are such badasses. And so athletic. Like, they could, like... Yeah. Squeeze your head right off. With I was eyes. just thinking about the watermelons. Yeah, yep. for sure. Mm-hmm. And just so we're clear, if this is your first time tuning in. We're pro sex work here. Yeah. If you don't like that, may I refer you to my butthole? Oh, I was going to say human history, but your butthole is fine. Yeah, it is fine. <laughs> Actually, I haven't seen it in a long time. I don't know what my butthole looks like these days. I'm sure it's all right. She then set out to pursue her influencer career once her dancing career was taking off. And that took off right away, too. She amassed a huge following and then moved back to Houston to dance there. And y'all, Houston's fucking oh. fun. OK, uh, I used to go to numbers in Houston. Yeah. With my friends. I never actually got to go to numbers, but a lot of my friends went to numbers. I left my mark on numbers. Did you? Well, I bought this giant, like, puffy pink prom dress, and I gothed it up. Like, I wore a corset with it, and I had, like, fishnets. Yeah. And pieces of the dress just fell off all night all around the club. I love that. Yeah. So, Drake, the rapper, was so impressed with her dancing that he dedicated an album to Miss Mercedes Moore. Aww. I think it's cute. I'm not a huge Drake fan. I'm not a fan of Drake at all, but... That's still a big accomplishment. Yeah, that's a huge accomplishment. She became a brand ambassador for Fashion Nova and other big, like, clothing yes. brands. Mm-hmm. And was followed on her media accounts by Snoop Dogg. Ooh. And I'm jelly, because I yeah. love Snoop Dogg. She worked with Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, and other famous rappers. Her pictures were super hot, and her career was going places. At the time of her death, she had a net worth of over $2 million. Being an entrepreneur was in her blood. Her dad, Mark, was one too. Her parents were divorced, but both mom and dad seemed involved in her life. She spoke often of her siblings and how much she loved them. She was very close to her family. One thing to note about Mercedes is how proud private she kept her private life i mean it's kind of like should be obvious like she didn't use her real name Mm -hmm. she would blur out like her apartment number Mm -hmm. and sometimes her backgrounds yeah um she she's smart she's smart she's business savvy you know when we talk about yeah when we talk about women not protecting themselves and getting all judgy and shit which i hate because they shouldn't have to um she did protect herself It just makes me just mad. Mm. Uh, We talk a lot about this on the podcast, about the dangers of the parasocial relationships. Right. But she was well aware of this. Right. And she created like the brand. She created a brand which was very separate separate from from Janae. Mm -hmm. From Janae. Mm -hmm. I'm using Mercedes because, yeah, it's just easier. You'll know who I'm talking about. And, like, she kept her birth name and her family members and stuff completely private. She kept who she was dating completely private. Mm -hmm. I mean, it didn't even really come out like her birth name until after her death. Mm -hmm. At some point in her career, she moved to a nice apartment in Houston. But the reason for the move is kind of dubious. Her father gave an interview to the press shortly after her death and stated that he had moved his daughter three times because of his own paranoia. He was really scared for her because she had stalkers. Uh, It makes, oh, it makes my heart just drop into my stomach whenever, especially like family members or parents have like near, like they get that feeling in their stomach. Yes. They can't really put their finger on it, but they sense what's about to come. That's why he called it his own paranoia because he wanted her to be free to live her life, obviously, but he was concerned for her safety several times during her life because she had stalkers. It would be dudes coming to the club and like. Not leaving yeah. her alone. Thinking they own her. Entitlement, mm-hmm. again. And when I dated some exotic dancers, they they also had issues with that. And I remember, like, coming up to the club and waiting for one of my girlfriends with a baseball bat. Because a guy had been following her after work. Jesus. It's gross. When Mercedes was found dead in her Houston apartment, rumors began to fly around immediately, which is what prompted her father to talk to the press in the first place. It was said she died of HIV AIDS or from COVID. The press immediately smeared her because of her OnlyFans account, though it wouldn't have been shameful if she did have it. Mercedes did not have HIV or AIDS at the time of her death. That was just something shitty somebody said on the Internet. Oh, my God. 
On Sunday, August 29th, 2021, Mercedes' sister, London, frantically called their father. Mercedes hasn't hadn't posted on Instagram in days, and this was highly unusual for Mercedes, who never missed her upload schedule. She treated this like a job, and she was very serious and punctual about it. She wouldn't miss posting, and she wouldn't, like, refuse her sister's phone calls. Mm -hmm. Not unless something was very wrong. Mercedes' father, Mark, drove to her apartment. He went there with his girlfriend and saw that Mercedes' car was in her garage space. So he tried calling and knocking. His daughter didn't answer. He knew something was horribly wrong. Mercedes and her dad were very close. She wouldn't avoid him or his phone calls. So he kicked the door down. No. He didn't even want to mess with calling oh police. Oh, my God. And it was there he would see what no parent should have to see. His child, Mercedes, dead at the bottom of the stairs. She was curled up in a ball, only partially clothed. To preserve her dignity, Mark wanted to cover her body with something, so he sent his girlfriend upstairs to Mercedes' room to find something to cover her with. When the girlfriend opened the door to her bedroom, she saw 34-year-old Kevin, a corto, on her bed, a knife sticking out of his chest. He was still moving, still breathing, making gurgling sounds. She rushed back downstairs to tell Mark. I can't imagine. Jesus Christ. How terrifying. When he went up there, he said that it looked like Kevin had been cutting on himself for days, bleeding everywhere. Blood was all over the apartment. Just spray drops, like just everywhere. Investigators would later say that Kevin had stabbed himself multiple times before inflicting the fatal wound to his chest. What the fuck? And even more disturbing were the messages he wrote in lipstick and makeup all over the walls. What did he write? I'm about to tell you. Oh, this sounds like a, just a really scary movie. It does. It's just a fucking horror story. Yeah. yeah. Janae led me to believe she cared about me, but wore another man's ring. That was one of the messages he wrote. He was likely referring to one of her last posts where Mercedes had shown off a ring her boyfriend had given her. Other messages said things like, I should have stayed in Florida and I wish I never met her. The message that gets brought up the most in this case is where he'd written, I was used for money. And of course, here comes the victim blaming. It's implied and sometimes outright stated that Mercedes led this guy on to get money from him on her OnlyFans. And I just find this highly dubious at best. But we'll get into that in a yeah. second. Mercedes' cause of death was blunt force trauma and strangulation. It's not known how Kevin got into her apartment because there was no forced entry. It doesn't seem like Mercedes knew him at all. I've seen a lot of videos and podcasts say she was an escort or sugar baby, but there's literally zero evidence backing that up except people talking shit. And it shouldn't be shit because so what if she was? Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> she didn't deserve to die because yeah. some piece of crap man felt entitled to her. Mm -hmm. And y'all, I see this so much with famous women, too. The case of Bjork stalker comes to mind. Mm -hmm. He felt entitled to the singer. He talked as though they were in a relationship in all of his online. Like, they weren't online, but his video blogs. Mm -hmm. He talked about how he felt personally betrayed when she got engaged to Tricky. And it's like. Bjork didn't know this man. Yeah. Had never met this man. Yeah. But he talked as though they were in a committed and loving relationship and she was cheating on him. And this is the same kind of talk that's in those messages that this guy wrote on her wall. This it feels like like with with how fast we've gained technology and um, the ability to access. People, yes, that's what I was saying. It's earlier. almost like we're developing other types or we're, we're hitting on some some mental health issues. Yeah, well, there's uh, there's an important note to make that like, so you all know role playing. You can do role playing right. all kinds of ways. And I don't mean in just sexy ways. Right. You can role play on Dungeons and Dragons, on like Dungeons. video games like yeah. World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. Your brain does not know the difference between role play and reality. It just can't distinguish the feelings because the same kind of feelings come up because mm -hmm. you're acting out scenes. Mm -hmm. Your brain thinks that's real. And I think some people, if you're right on the edge of some kind of mental illness issue, yeah. 
you can't distinguish between fantasy and reality right. when it feels so real to you. Right. When you make your whole world this person, you become obsessed, which is clearly to me what happened here through no fault right. of her own. Right. Um, yeah, I'm sure he was on her OnlyFans. The police have literally never released that information. Doesn't matter either way. Mm -hmm. But but we do see this time and time again with people who are famous. Yeah. And the and thing accessible. is accessible. Mm -hmm. And that was his access to her. It felt very intimate because these are going to be, you know, nude photos and maybe mm -hmm. even, you know, more than that, which is fine. Or commenting back and, you know, she may comment like, yeah. oh, thanks, sweetie, or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. But you know what? She's saying that to hundreds, thousands mm -hmm. of dudes. It's probably automated responses. She's probably got an assistant. It really doesn't mean it. anything. It doesn't mean we anything. We say it to each other. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't matter. Yeah. But to him, it meant something because he wasn't well. And he made it ma make. Yes, exactly. Something mean something. So also, I will be covering the Bjork stalker case this week on Patreon. Yeah. Okay. So if that is something you guys want to hear more about, mm -hmm. enjoy the Patreon and you can. Friends and family of Mercedes said that she was not an escort or sugar baby. It's important to note, too, that if she was, she'd have had celebrity clients and rich clients, not some random dude from Florida. Yeah. So that entire line of rhetoric is dumb, and I never want to hear it again. Yeah. Look, y'all, I'm going to post some pictures of this girl. Fucking gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And she's like, Drake dedicated an album to her. You mean to tell me this scruffy, no-name jerk from Florida she's going to be, like, in some kind of clandestine relationship with? Even if she is an escort, he could not afford her. Do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of bartending when, you know when the customer is getting drunk and they might be tipping you like $2 a drink yeah. and they, they think that because they spilled their heart out to you and that you smiled at them and oh, gave them the beverage now. that they <laughs> asked for. Yeah. That now you are into them and yep. you're somehow going home with them. I've had that happen when I did bartending. Yes. Yeah. It, it gives, it gives me, Oh my God, I'm just doing my job. You know, yeah. like, please leave me alone. Um, I'm just trying to work here. You know what I mean? Like, she was just trying to fucking work. Yeah. She mm -hmm. made, she, you know, it's no, and again, there's no difference between going to work at McDonald's than being an OnlyFans model, a stripper, or a sex worker. Right. There's no difference. You're still selling your body and your time. Well, see, this is the thing that, like, kind of pisses me off, is that in the Courtney Clenny case, mm -hmm. she was called an OnlyFans model. Yeah, they never really talked about like the media never really talked about or tried to expose the fact that, you no, know, she was having like full on like orgies and stuff. And not that it matters, but no, she had a lot of sex tapes out there and it was never used against her. But for some reason, Mercedes Moore is way less of I'll give you one guess as to why that is. I don't, I don't want to make those words. She's black. Mouth. Mercedes is black. Courtney's Just white. Makes me the so end. mad. That's We're going to demonize her for being a black woman who is also a sex worker. Mm -hmm. Cool. Love that. And, you know, mm, nope, mm -mm, nope mm -mm. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to calm down. Yeah. There's my blood pressure. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to just put this out here, though. There's going to come a day where I am. Not, I'm going to call out these podcasts by name and I don't care. Yeah. I'm getting real close because I've had it. Y'all do better. It's it's really hard to get through any type of research. Um, you're just going it, to it's even in the news. It's in it's in all the articles. But it's, when people are going off on other mm, judging, especially the victims lives. And I don't know. She just had these beautiful eyes that were so alive and looked so kind to me. And I don't know. She could have been a piece of shit because I don't know her. Right. But from everything her friends and her family said, the people who did know her is that she was a wonderful person, full of life and ambition and drive. I see so much determination that in her too. story. Yes, this so much. Beautiful strength and determination. And the thing is, is when people shine and, and, and are authentic authentically themselves that's it right they there. are threatening to people that don't necessarily people are have it fucking all together jealous of how beautiful she was yeah. and listen she had a body for day oh my goodness mm -hmm. like dang girl like you worked hard for that and you could see yeah. her shining with love for herself and self-esteem and nobody likes a black woman who feels good about herself and that's that's it that's the end 
That's the reason this case gets talked about the way that it does, to the point where people almost imply that she deserved what happened to her. Like in the comments, they'll say, well, when you live that kind of lifestyle, dot, 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 then what? You get paid because that's all that should happen. Yeah. You shouldn't get stalked. You shouldn't get harassed. And you damn sure shouldn't get murdered for providing a service that people want. People want this or she wouldn't have so many followers. There's nothing morally reprehensible about what she did. She took what God gave her and made some money. We're in capitalism. OK, we're all doing our best. Yeah, I would love to make money off my looks, but I don't have the dedication. I'm also old. So there we go. And everybody's age is as fuck. I'm just tired of, her, of people saying she deserved it because of the work she did. Right. No, she didn't. Right. And him saying that she took money from him or she used she, him for she money, used him for money. Yeah. Well, you got nothing else to bring to the table, Kevin. What you mean? Because you paid a monthly fee. To see some to news? See? Shut up. You paid. You got your your goods and services. That's it. She like, gave what was promised in the terms of service, you dick. Yeah. That's Mercedes accepted gifts and donations from her OnlyFans followers and Mark, Mercedes' father. That's what Howie believes that somehow Kevin got a hold of her address and real name. Oh, God. I disagree. I think it's possible that he just stalked her. Yeah. Until he found it. Because, I mean, listen. The, she would have probably had like a P.O. box or something. She did, yeah. yeah. So I think it's more that he just figured it out from context clues from her Instagram. Yeah. For real. And then, You watch the backgrounds. If you're going to stalk, you, you know. You watch the backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You watch the scenery. Mm -hmm. And that's how he found it. He de he was obsessed, clearly, and he dedicated all his fucking... Listen, when I go into the Bjork case, like, the stuff he knew about Bjork was crazy, and this is in the age before the internet was th the way that it is today. Right. Which is crazy. So, not a lot is known about Kevin Accorto. He was 34, living in Florida, and that's all the information we have on him. He was born in 1997. I think it's pretty clear. He was an obsessed fan who stalked her and killed her. He brutally beat her and then strangled her to death. He then spent one to two days in her apartment, hurting himself, scribbling on the walls, and then finally killing himself with a stab wound to the chest. Oh, he... He, he was, was sick. very mentally ill. Very sick. Very, yes. very much so. Law enforcement said there is no evidence supporting that the two of them knew each other prior to this event. None. No communications. Not on her phone. Yeah. Not on his phone. I do not know why the rumors persist. This is not a conspiracy. This is simple cut and dry case. I keep losing the name, but you covered the case of the young youtuber that was murdered at, at like a signing she was just like shot point oh, blank yeah uh michelle grimmy yes yeah I, and yeah. i might have got her first name wrong but grimmy or christine? it was christine grimmy christine. yeah 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 what did she do nothing yeah this is the same thing this there's exactly no difference the because she had an only fans doesn't mean anything it's yeah. mean it's irrelevant yeah do you understand y'all it doesn't matter if she took off all her clothes and he paid to look at it on a website, yeah. then Christina Grimmie getting up and singing for her fans. There is no difference between these jobs in my eyes. Yeah. No, like judge worthy difference at all. Zero. You're Start flipping just out. making your money. That's it. You're paying just your bills. Making, that's all that's just it. making the bread. Mm -hmm. Anybody who thinks that making money a certain way makes you morally superior. Mm -hmm. Fuck off. Done. Yeah. Like, she, she didn't need this dude's money, y'all. He didn't have a lot. You, I, I just know he didn't. I can just tell. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't call me judging. It's just I know a fellow poor when I see one, okay? <laughs> yeah. And, and there's no shame yeah. in that. You use your ducats to buy yeah. some OnlyFans if you want to. Just don't stalk people and kill them. I think that's... But here's the deal. She didn't need his fucking money, y'all. No. Again, Drake dedicated an album to her. She's pulling in four to five grand a weekend dancing. Mm -hmm. Her OnlyFans is probably making her hundreds and thousands of dollars a month. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's so hard up. She's going to give this guy, like, any more than an automated response when you buy something off of OnlyFans. Right. Nothing. <laughs> And that's all she she should need to do. The it. rampant speculation, desire to build a conspiracy out of this videos like Meg Mercedes more exposed 
What? Oh, yes. Disgusting. I'll I'll have to see what you're talking. I know that most people shouldn't, but I'll have to see because I'll show you. But I'm not link. I'm not giving this no. fucking channel any more views. I shouldn't have even clicked on it. Yeah. But I just thought maybe new evidence it had makes been found. Me want to like throw up. It makes my stomach drop into my butt. It just it hurts my soul because I always put. I can't help it. I always think like, what would happen to me? Or I think of them as, well, what if that was my sister or my brother or my aunt or my uncle or somebody that I loved? Yeah, because you give a shit beyond just getting clicks. Because these are human beings. Mm -hmm. We're telling these stories about human beings. So on that one, that video I looked at, this is the one with the tarot readings. He had gotten people, a male host had gotten people to do tarot readings that said that this guy, Kevin, was her client and that he killed her because she had been stringing him along. And he's like, well, you know, when you string somebody along, not that I'm blaming her. That's exactly what you were doing, though. Anytime somebody says, well, uh, not to be rude or anything or they're about to say the rudest shit you've ever heard (laughs) ever literally set in the stage, buddy. So I'm not going to speculate on Kevin's mental health too much because we don't have any information, but I can think it's obvious obvious that he's ill. Somebody was disturbed. He's very ill. And you know what y'all, I know people want a better explanation. They want to know why, you know, that there was no forced entry. I'm going to guess he had the fucking knife and he forced his way in when he knocked on the door. He could have posed as a delivery person. She probably got packages all the time. But making an entire YouTube video with these tarot cards and depicting it and asserting it as evidence is not it, folks. It's not good. We got to stop with the wild speculation Mm -hmm. because of the no forced entry. People think it surely means that Mercedes knew this man and he was a client of hers. No, there's no evidence supporting that. This hurts the family. It smears her name and places the blame on her shoulders, which is gross. I'm not sure if it's jealousy or misogyny or racism or all three, but doing the research on this was hard and made me cry Yeah, (laughs) because of how awful they talked about her in the comments. And all she did, all she did was be beautiful. Yeah, that's it. Y'all get another fucking hobby. Mm -hmm. It's just gross. Saying things like this. You can't play with people's feelings and trust that this girl was no angel. You know what? Yes, she was. She was a beautiful angel who was also an exotic dancer and OnlyFans content creator. She can be both. She didn't deserve that. Again, why would she take clients like this scrub? She'd have VIP clients, celebrities, not this guy. But let's just play devil's advocate. Not that Spicy Daddy can't speak for himself, but fine, whatever. And say that, sure, she was an escort and this guy was her client. So... Even if they were fucking and even if they were married, even if they were and she was cheating on him. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they were so involved, they had love letters to each other. And no, mm -mm, doesn't matter. Not okay. This woman died. For no reason. Mm -hmm. Her family is grieving. Stop being ugly. So a lot of people will try and pull a lesson to give to young black women in these videos about her death. There's no lesson what? to learn I'm, from I'm, her death. I'm sorry, what? Uh-huh. Like, don't let your little girls be Instagram models. Number one, let me tell you something right now. My father, I'm 43 years old. My father oh, has my not had a say in my life since I was 17 years old. She's an, she's She was 33, an adult grown-ass woman. Her dad could say, don't do that. And she can say, go fuck yourself, dad. I am tired of this purity culture fundy garbage, okay? Mm -mm. And if you're a fundamentalist Christian, you're in a cult, call your dad. Unless he's one too, and then I don't know to call a friend. But it's a cult, and this purity culture, there's no such thing. Are you listening to me? Virginity isn't a thing. Mm -hmm. Purity, as far as like having sex making you dirty, isn't a thing. Mm -hmm. That's stupid. It's stupid. Stupid. <laughs> Full stop. And it's misogynistic as fuck. And telling dads, don't let your shut the fuck on up. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Don't tell your daughters anything like support them, lift them up, teach them to be strong, to be smart, to be brave. That's what you yeah. do. You don't, none of this shit, this purity shit. Mm -hmm. It's incestuous to me and nasty. It's redirecting the blame to where it should be placed. On the guy who killed her. Yes. We can't. And the mental health 
issues in this country because had he been able to get help with whatever mm-hmm. condition he had, because clearly he wasn't right. He, he was sick. Yeah. And so he needed help. It, Obviously. There should have been tons of warning signs along the way. Oh, well, I'm sure there attention. were. Clearly this was built up over time. But let's talk about the other two facets of this too. Misogyny and yeah, racism. Exactly. Women don't owe you shit they don't owe you anything Mm -hmm. they don't owe you anything Mm -hmm. i don't care if you paid to look at her naked titties yeah she she's there you got what you paid for you're done go away you looked bye the misogyny in this country doesn't just hurt women i need i don't know how many times i need to say this it hurts men too yes obviously he was hurting or he wouldn't behave this way yes so put the blame where it belongs. It doesn't belong on Instagram, OnlyFans, or this poor woman who died in a horrible, scary way. Mm-hmm. And if you don't feel empathy for her because she was a stripper and an OnlyFans model, you are broken. Not her. She wasn't broken for being a sex worker. She wasn't dirty. She was a beautiful human being who deserved love and respect like each and every one of you listening to me does. And this, I think there's something in us that we hate ourselves, okay? I I do. I struggle with self-loathing and bad self-esteem. And so what we got to do is just drag everybody else down to our level of self-hate. No, I've never been able to understand this part of humanity. I I never get it. I get it. I can hate myself to the fullest, and it's so gross, and it's really bad. But that's me. That's me. I can hate me all I want. I'm not going to extend that hate to you. Well, that's no. fucking weird. I don't think it's that weird. I think it's a common thing that people do because I the mean, self-loathing becomes yeah. overpowering. It's too much to hold. You let it spill out. You bring people down to your level. So you get judgy as fuck. Mm-hmm. You think, well, I paid my way through school by flipping burgers. So I'm better. No, you're not. You sold your body. You just didn't make as much fucking money because you're not as hot. And that's OK. You don't <laughs> owe anyone being hot. Right. That's just not the job you have. And it's all right. It's OK. It's okay that she made more money. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be mad, be mad at capitalism for a change Mm -hmm. and be mad at misogyny and be mad at racism. Be mad at the man who hurt this woman, but don't be mad at her. We should be like, you know what? We should cheerlead these successes. Absolutely. You're not in poverty. Hell yes. Good job. You work hard on your appearance, especially, I don't know. There's something really just awe inspiring about sex workers um i know that we kind of tend to think of them as femme presenting people but i mean of all genders shapes and sizes as a former sex worker i was friends with sex workers and let me yeah. tell you they come in every flavor every yeah. color of the rainbow every I just body think type it's so beautiful i think that okay i mean aside from you know having to be poor and and, and the the really rough sides of sex work that could be um i just think it's beautiful that people can be in their skin and say you know what this shit is worth some money. This is work. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I mean, uh, even sex with your own spouse can be transactionary sometimes. Like, oh, yeah. hey, I'll oh, give yeah. you a handy if you do them dishes. Yeah. I've said that many mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. fun. So I think the lesson then to learn from it is this. Sex work is real work. Yes. Sex work doesn't make someone bad or dirty or less than. Sex work doesn't mean she or he or they deserve to be mistreated, abused, or murdered. And if you think differently, ask yourself why, and then extend grace and empathy to your fellow human beings. Don't you dare, if you condemn sex work, send me a nice email. <laughs> I was a sex worker for nearly 15 years. And if you're going to sit there and judge someone else, but then send me a nice email, Lily, and you're so funny, I don't want it because you're condemning me too and you're judging me and you weren't there. Sex work was healing and transformative for me. I was sexually abused as a child and this helped me reclaim my body and have power and control over it. And for the most part, it was fun. I made a lot of money. I made a lot of friends. I saw a lot of things, had a lot of experiences. Yes, there were some negatives, but if that shit were legal, and I was protected, yes. then it wouldn't have had negatives yes. and it would have been nothing but a beautiful experience. Yes. That's Ooh. what we want. If you are, however, curious about my past in that regard, I'm more than happy to talk about it on Discord. Hop on there and ask any question you want mm. and I will happily answer it. I have no shame. I feel no shame. No amount of anyone else's judgment will ever make me feel ashamed of what I did to keep the lights on and my babies fed. It's a full stop. Thank you. It's just, uh, it hurts me yeah. because yeah. I know that those same people talking about her that way would talk about me that way if I were murdered. Yep. They would say I deserved it. Yeah. 
and I was leading them on. Mm-hmm. Mm. Girl. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. R.I.P. Mercedes because yeah. she was beautiful and strong and I really admire I admire her. And she only was at the beginning. She really was. She's only 33 and yeah. at the like peak of her like beauty and power. Yeah. And it's gross that it got taken away this way. And we should all just be sad that we were st- for we the were state stolen. of things yeah. that she was stolen from us. Mm-hmm. And if you have any other take on this, it's just objectively wrong and bad. Yeah. And I'll be, ju- I'll, I will judge for that. That's mm. bigotry is something I'll always judge for. But now it's business time because I don't <laughs> want to talk about that anymore. I know. I've got my blood pressure so high. Oh, I'm sweaty. I, just, I need to go to like a punching bag or something and just get it all Me out. and Maris are going crystal mining on Monday. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to aggressively dig up some pointy, shiny yeah, rocks. Yeah, get a little chisel, a little hammer. Tink, 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 tink. tink. It's going to be fun. Mm hmm. Yeah, but business time. Hey, guess what? My Mother's Day gift sets are in the shop. It's and if beautiful. you love your mom, you'll go buy one. That's a great song. Yeah, it I made it just now. Mm-hmm. It does slap. Mm-hmm. I think a good techno remix of that, some like EDM beats, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, if you're a listener, put in the code CRUEL, C-R-U-E-L. I have such a hard time spelling that fucking word. And you will get 10% off your order. Yes, you will. Mm-hmm. And that's a sale that will always be. And I have all kinds of cool stuff there. I have decor. 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 Yep. Jewelry. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Witchcraft shit. Mm-hmm. It's in there. Go get mm-hmm. some. Also, our Patreon. We've added some new tiers. Um, I was told to. <laughs> <laughs> they made us do it. I, I was actually told to by a patron who's a marketing um, specialist and said I needed more tears, so I added them. I cry all the time. What do you mean I need more tears? Oh, shut up. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine, I'll I guess. Go cry. <laughs> Why don't you go cry about it? Well, I'll... I will. God, your name is so apt to you yep. because you're always fucking it's crying. Stupid. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And like a good Virgo, I cry in the bathroom with the water running. So. Mm-hmm. Well, as I said, tears, new tears. ones. I don't want to explain so them all. So many tears. There's so many now. Just go look. Just yeah. go to our link tree and click. You don't have, I'm not pressuring you. We're making new. tea. She's making tea. I'm making tea blends. Mm-hmm. So a tea of the month. You can mm-hmm. be in the VIT <laughs> tier. <coughs> the tea puns are very good. So yeah. good. So stupid. Anyway, go look at it. Mm-hmm. And then we have merch. So you want a t-shirt? Yeah. A tea. Why sure. wouldn't you? You sure do. I'm just going to punch you. Yep. Yep. And then you'll cry because mm-hmm. it'll hurt. Uh, then we have like stickers and pens and mugs and bags. Go buy some and show everyone. Yes. Say, look what I listen to. And then tag us. Oh, yes. Oh. That would make me very excited. You know what? I'm going to do one better. If you buy our shirt and you wear it or a coffee mug and you drink it from it mm-hmm. and you take a selfie and you tag us in it, I'll send you a present. Aw. What's up? I will. Aw. I I'll like send that. you a little gift package. And no matter what, if you ever tag us, I always put it in the Instagram story and yes. in the Instagram. But definitely, if thing. you've got like some of our merch, because I know that uh, I see them sell, so I know some of you do, tag it's me. It's nice. And merch. I'll send you a present. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, lastly, but not leastly, is me and Maris write books. Um, I want you to go read them. We don't make money off. Well, we make a little money off our books, but not a ton. Yeah. We mostly just want people to read them. So some of them are free, so you can get a taste of what our writing is like. But they have everything: sex and mostly sex, elves. and like elves being dates. vampires and vampires. Yes, yes, yes dragons yes. sometimes, and some incorporeals horrors, incorporeal horrors, yes. and people having sex with those. Because why not? Yes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Our books have a lot of spiciness, as they oh. say on Book Talk. So give yeah. yourself a little hallucination for free and watch it in your head. Yeah, like a little movie. And yeah. then you think, oh, that's weird. I'm listening to him talk about UFOs. Great. And I'm then I just this. read about all these cocks. That's upsetting. <laughs> but hey, it's all fun. I don't know. New kink unlocked. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so upset he's spaghetti right now. <laughs> you know what? Nah, just, you know what? Fine, fine. It could be a new kink. You can read my erotica as I tell you about murder. And I guess if that's your thing, you're no shame here. But I'm going to go hide in the bed with my dog in a very non-gross way. Okay. 
let me explain. So I've been, um, I get on the YouTube, right? And I like to look up the weirdest shit I can find for, cause I got to get away from true crime. If I'm not researching it, I don't want to consume it. I've got to decompress. And I was, uh, researching about the Omega verse. Y'all. If you don't know what that is, please go to YouTube and type in what is the Omega verse and you will not be sorry. You might be sorry, but you won't be sorry. It's wild. It's just werewolf porn. Is it? Oh, it's so you strange. Mean, oh. oh, it's a woo. <laughs> There's a lot of a wooing and a lot of inappropriate activities with <laughs> dog guys. And then a lot of breeding kink and a lot of male red pregnancy rockets. and a lot of red rockets. <laughs> And none of it's hot to me. No. But the amount of popularity this has and the drama in the community of writers. Wow. It's it's impressively cringy and terrible and awesome. And I love it. And I love that you're just like you're not just enough a writer. I mean, like you're a writer, but oh, like yes. you're, you're just enough in the, the perimeters of what would be that genre. So you're able to kind of see well, in. I write some nasty stuff. I'm not yeah. going to apologize for it, but it's usually but it's pretty vanilla that. in comparison. There's no red rockets. That's for fucking sure. <laughs> I can't, I can't cope, dude. Uh... Oh, like what you like. It's harmless. You're reading a book, but I'm just, in these communities, like, because then I went to Facebook and I was oh, like, you I'm going to keep look. going. Of uh, course. And I was so weird. <laughs> eat shit. I love y'all. And I was like looking at the groups and I was like, oh, y'all need Jesus. And I don't say that often. And then I ran away. But yeah, go like watch some like videos on it. In fact, I'll link one somewhere. I won't. I no. won't at all. Mm -mm. I won't be watching that. No, it's nope. very funny. Pass. Well, suit yourself. Anyway, hey, if all you can do, though, to support this podcast is to go look at the Omegaverse. No, don't <laughs> fucking do documentaries that. on YouTube. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, if all you can do is listen, we really appreciate you. Hey, and we're our numbers are up. Y'all. So have, I know we have new listeners. Can I just wait a second before we leave? Well, yeah, yeah. Y'all have been reaching out like the past couple days, and it's been so sweet so and sweet kind and, and cuddly and loving and wonderful. And I've just been the biggest wet blanket emotional wreck mess and y'all have literally scooped me up off the floor and it's and it's just been every now and then somebody just says hey you're doing a great job yeah, love the show so it's nice. not not a big deal but to me to it me it's a big deal everything i and don't know how to respond often. y'all are just, just saying, so important to <laughs> us you. you're thank really you really so important nice. to us so yes it means the world thank um you. yeah i had been i don't know if i was having a bad week i was having kind of a stressful week and so those little messages are very golly they just help so much make me feel better mm -hmm. and you know because a lot of times making this podcast it's like i'm going to record this thing i worked on for like 12 hours and then i'm going to throw it into the void so it's nice to hear back yeah. and know that you enjoyed yeah. that or you learned something yeah. or you had a like I don't it gets know. me excited about the next one and the next one and the I know, next like, one and, and it yeah. makes me want to do better mm-hmm mm-hmm do better research, spend more time. And so that's what we've been doing this whole week. We, we do this for y'all. Yeah. We like you. We do like you pretty sure good. Sure do. I reckon. Yeah. All right, I'm going to quit that, whatever the fuck okay. that was. And we're, we're not going to go feel now. anything the next episode. Bye. Bye. platform of choice. Linktree slash cruelty has all of the links. Check out our Patreon for exclusive episodes, merch, ad-free episodes, live ghost hunts, and much more. Please be sure to subscribe. New episodes are uploaded weekly. Thank you so much. See you next time. Music and production by Libby.